Ariel, Belle, and Esmeralda are in Frollo's study looking for the magical device, which sends villains back to the void. Because Frollo would keep it in his study and not on his person at all times. They find the device and skip on down to the jail, where Esmeralda says, And if I know Frollo, he's damned too, threatening to put the screws to her. No pun intended. Because he wanted to bone her earlier, and screws are a medieval torture device. It's a pun, therefore it's funny. Fucking puns. I hate puns. God. Tina chews Frollo out all for all the evil he's done, but never mentions how awful he really was. There's no mention of him enslaving the kids or of him molesting her. She just focuses on how he was planning to seize control of Walroy and then send his cohorts back to the void. You had the power to send them all back, yet you wanted to keep the glory to yourself. Selfish. 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 That bastard. He sent four villains back to the void, thus doing half of our work for us. That son of a bitch. How dare he. Aladar and Simba go to Cruella de Vil and trick her into coming into the jail. She falls for it because when a talking dinosaur and a talking lion come by and tell you to do something, you just do it. So fucking stupid. They tell her that Frollo's got some sort of fluffy blue animal that he wants all to himself, but they're willing to let Cruella have it so that she can kill it for its fur. And we're treated to sentences like these ones. Boys, I do believe you've made my day. Blue fur, eh? Rare beast. I should show Frodo a thing or two when I arrive swathed in rare blue fur, the very thing he's been hunting. That little beast can't wait to have his fur all wrapped around you and... Okay. Moving along. I think the weirdest part is that Simba and Aladdin are the ones luring Cruella into the trap. Even she would have to wonder why two animals are encouraging her to kill something and use its pelt for a coat. But now, she doesn't question a thing. She buys it all hook, line, and sinker and heads to the jail, where Tina, Belle, Ariel, and Esmeralda are tormenting Frollo. Claude Frollo, clearly at the end of his rope, no pun intended, scowled and glowered. That famous awful bear that few could stand, except Tina and other ladies who refused to be suckered in by the man's bad boy charm. Fucking puns. Oh, and yeah. Threatening to rape somebody is totally bad boy charm. To top it off, he allowed himself, once again to his chagrin, to be suckered into a woman's deadly spell. Why oh why won't I ever learn? Curse those manly feelings of love and romance. It is the woman who always lures the most moral of men into her web. No wonder I fell for Tina's supposed love for me. She used me, just like as my older. They're all liars and schemers of the worst sort. Curse these manly feelings of wanting to brutalize another human being! No! Oh no. You know, Frodo doesn't actually love or feel any sort of romantic feelings for Tina or Esmeralda. The author seems to be confusing love with desire to rape. All Frodo wants to do is rape them. But Esmeralda tells him off! And what will you do to us, Frollo? You know, if we had this in a court of miracles, then maybe... No, Esm, said Belle, then the movie wouldn't have ended like it did. But, rejoined Ariel, it would have been knocked down funny to see Frollo all trussed up like an old nag. So when did the Little Mermaid become the Little Redneck? And you know, it's just really weird hearing Belle chastise Esmeralda for changing the outcome of her movie. Because I thought the movies were supposed to be the characters' lives, but if they're just acting out a movie... You know, I can't even begin to wrap my mind about how stupid this is. And her name is not Esme. It's Esmeralda. But Frollo is still pissed. He would make Tina and her band of Disney goody goodies pay in ways most indescribable. Goody goodies? Are we serious? When did Frollo turn into a Scooby-Doo villain? Is he gonna blame some meddling kids and their mentally handicapped dog next? God. So Cruella shows up in the jail, and the mystery hero is revealed to be Stitch, from Lilo and Stitch. Anyone who figures that out ahead of time gets a gold star. Another harness is produced, Cruella is trussed up alongside Frollo, and then they hand the controls over to Stitch for a little while. 
asked Happy, go pukey. Why is that comma there? Why? Why? It's not supposed to be there. It's wrong. This is... That's like the biggest... It's not even the biggest grammar mistake you can make, but it's the most easily avoidable. Because if you type this out, a little wiggly re green line comes up to show you that it's wrong. Any machine will do this. A Mac, Windows, a typewriter. God! Fucking comma. St oh, stupid. And Stitch, a mystery hero who did jack shit! Claude Frollo's pale face turned various shades of green as his eyes rolled back into his head. The hollow cheeks swelled as Frollo felt his insides heave. He tried to speak, but the nausea was just too much to bear. Both scream and curse it as they tried oh so hard not to upchuck on the spot. And they vomit all over Corilla DeVille's fur coat, eliciting more laughter from Tina and the Disney 7. Cause making people vomit is just hilarious! Tina finally sends Frollo and Cruella back to the void with the magical device, which she should have done several paragraphs ago. But Tina still has some feelings for Frollo. Tina, still furious with herself for playing along with Frollo and merely becoming Doug, the man's wife. At what point did he propose to her? At what point was marriage even on the table? You know, frankly, I think Tina has got some serious delusions as to what Frollo actually wanted from her. But I'm not going to go into that. I'm going to go into the epilogue instead. Oh boy. Well, the Disney-loving town of Wallowee returned to its normal, peaceful, friendly self once those three villains were finally given their most unceremonious exit. Thanks to the seven Disney heroes who helped the townspeople put things right again. All the pets were returned to their owners. Business folks can go about their trade without threats or shakedowns, and the kids are free to be, well, kids again. Yay! It's over! It's not? Well, shit! What about Furlo, Kula, and Gaston? What about a special device that made for Furlo? The very thing he used to send Gaston and Kula's boys packing? And what about a special communicator, the one kept up in the clock tower? The thing that Bent fiddled with that plunged this town into an experience it would never forget. After the villains returned to the void, Aladar had Aileen step on it. Oh yes, that 50-ton lady really stomped on it, crushing it to hundreds of useless pieces. Why did they even have a device that could bring villains back in the first place? That communicator is now only used to call good Disney characters, never the bad guys. We have all learned our lesson. Can we please go home now? Oops. Thought I'd forgotten something. You know how Frollo lost his shoe while on that wild torture harness ride. I don't care. Oh, wait a minute, who's this I? Did Jiminy Cricket start narrating again? Oh, do I care? Well, seems Phoebus and Norris, while clearing out all that souped up torture equipment, happened upon it. Since no one really wanted any mementos of the villain's retenure, Phoebus had it sent back to its owner, to the boy, via Hercules and Pegasus. So, wait, wait, wait a minute. Hercules and Pegasus could enter the void. Couldn't they have just brought the villains back to the void? And how come they can enter the void? Can other Disney heroes enter the void? If Disney heroes can enter the void, how come villains can't leave it? What happened once Frollo was reunited with his footwear is anyone's guess. Rumor has it Madam Mim used the shoe on both Sid and Frollo for disciplinary purposes. I won't say more. You do the mental picture. Wish I didn't have an imagination.